Good Friday, everyone. Today I want to talk about what the Bible says about how God wants us to treat others. It appears to me that this is something that we as people who know God really need to work on these days. There are so many acts of hate and intolerance every time you turn on the news. And it seems as if this hate and intolerance has become very violent, even deadly at times. So what does God say we should do? In my search for an answer to this question, I discovered several Bible passages that can help. 1 Peter 3, 8 through 11, the contemporary English version says this, all of you should have concern and love for each other. You should also be kind and humble. Don't be hateful and insult people just because they are hateful and insult you. Instead, treat everyone with kindness. You are God's chosen ones, and God will bless you. The scriptures say, do you really love life? Do you want to be happy? Then stop saying cruel things and quit telling lies. Give up your evil ways and do right as you find and follow the road to peace. Wow, this is profound, isn't it? I love the fact that God gives all of us instructions that we need uh, to be the people that God wants us to be in the Bible. Don't be hateful and insult people just because they are hateful and insult you. If we all could follow just this one verse, our world would be a much better place, wouldn't it? We as people who know God are called to a higher standard than the rest of humanity. We are to be different. We are to be kinder. Another scripture passage to support this premise is Proverbs 16, 24. This is good. Kind words are like honey. They cheer you up and make you feel strong. This is so true. I talked with our elementary Sunday morning Bible study kids this past week about how there are people in the world who never hear encouraging kind words. Some people may never hear that God loves them, and made them unique and special. They may never had, have heard an encouraging, kind word that could help them develop confidence and strength of character. Think about it. A large majority of the bullies and hateful people are in the world are ones that don't have the support and encouragement they need to make it through this life. If they heard daily how special they are and that God loves them, it could change their perspective and their lives. Those of us who know God should be the ones sharing this encouragement and kindness to those in the world around us. I've noticed something since we've uh, been back from the COVID pause. We all seem to be a little more easily frustrated, maybe have a shorter fuse and are less patient. This is especially true for our children. I've noticed some changes in their behavior. Some are easily irritated and frustrated, and some have forgotten their manners, but so have some of the adults. All of this is affecting our society today, and I believe is a contributing factor to the discord and division that we see in our communities and in our world. Another scripture passage I found that is helpful to me is Romans 16, 17. Listen to this. My friends, I beg you to watch out for anyone who causes trouble and divides the church by refusing to do what all of you were taught. Stay away from them. Wow. Stay away from divisive people. Hmm. If only we could. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I'm in situations where people are being very aggressive with their point of view, I get uncomfortable. I believe everyone is entitled to their point of view and opinion. But if others disagree or have another way of seeing things, it doesn't mean that we should be responding unkindly. Loving, lovingly sharing God's love and care, even with unlovely people, is what God has called us to do. Hebrews 12, 14 says this, Try to live at peace with everyone. Live a clean life. If you don't, you will never see the Lord. I found some commentary on this verse. It says this, this passage of Hebrews encourages Christians to hold fast despite persecutions and hardships. 
Most of what we face as believers is not as drastic as it could be, and God uses those experiences to train us into a deeper, stronger faith. A common command given in the New Testament is for Christians to seek peace between themselves and others. In fact, this capacity to get along is tied closely to our spiritual maturity. This is especially important when it comes to relationships between other Christians. Not only does mutual love serve to build up the church, it's a primary sign to the world that we are disciples of Christ. Along with mutual peace, the writer encourages a life of holiness. Again, this is a common theme of the New Testament teachings. Christians are empowered by the Holy Spirit to live godly, righteous, moral lives. Sin is always the result of rejecting that power in some way. Those who, per who persist in wrongdoings are proving that they do not have the influence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Some other verses that instruct us are 2 Timothy 2, 22 through 26. Run from temptations that capture, capture young people. Always do the right thing. Be faithful, loving, and easy to get along with. Worship with people whose hearts are pure. Stay away from stupid and senseless arguments. These only lead to trouble, and God's servants must not be troublemakers. They must be kind to everyone, and they must be good teachers and very patient. For those of us who have strong, a strong personality and character, all this can be a challenge. When we know God and allow God to guide and direct our lives, these biblical characteristics that God teaches us become a natural, organic part of our nature. The more time we spend learning how God wants us to live, the easier living God's way becomes. Our world needs God's people, especially now. May we all be a con on a constant journey searching for and learning what God has for our lives. And may we all learn more about how God wants us to live. Something to think about. Let's pray. Dear God, it seems like our world is so unsettled right now. Help all of us who know you be the calming and peaceful presence in our world that is churning with divisiveness. May we be open and loving, showing love even to unlovely people. Who knows? That little bit of love shared may be the only loving touch someone may have. It's a lot of responsibility, but God, you commanded us to love others. And God, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.